Yo, what up? Welcome to another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. I'm Patrick, and I am joined by my buddy Vubang. What's up, Vubang? What's up, Patrick? So it is December, and <laughs> right now the NBA people are dropping into the protocols, dropping like flies. We just heard that Luka Doncic is in protocols, and they're supposed to play on Christmas Day against uh, the Mavs are supposed to play the Jazz. And it's crazy, man. I talked about this right after Jordan Poole went into protocols. I was like, this is not an aberration. This is going to be kind of the norm, especially as we get into these winter months and as Omicron starts spreading around North America. So I don't know. I've been keeping my eye on this stuff and seeing if the NBA is going to pause the season, what their options are going to be. I figured that they would at least try to make it through the Christmas games and they've already lost one of their marquee players. So I don't know. What do you think of all this, man? I hate to be the one who's like an armchair epidemiologist, but don't you love the way that we all know how to say epidemiology now, as opposed to just two years ago when we couldn't even pronounce it? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, if this is really, if, if, Folks sort of looked at what Omicron does and look at the level of vaccination rate among players. This is supposedly going to be a temporary thing, um, especially if you've got your third your booster. Um, I know Draymond admitted that he had his, his booster, and I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure Steph did as well. And so now you're just basically seeing who got the Johnson and Johnson and no, no booster, which is obviously going to be uh, a certain player who did the bare minimum uh, to be able to start playing, uh, yeah. who is out right now, who I'm not going to name um, by, by name. And so, yeah, hopefully it's just really going to be a temporary thing. And let's just take away the fact that it's COVID and just basically say it's an injury that you can avoid if you got a certain treatment. And some players yeah. got three doses of that treatment, you know, and some players got one and some got two, and some have just really been good at their treatment. Um, And so if we just think about this as any other sort of treatment plan, then the teams that are really good um, at this treatment are just going to keep going um, versus teams that bring back players that don't believe in the treatment because the earth is flat. (laughs) Who all of a sudden might be coming back because they are, I mean, the Nets are like, well, running out of players. So, you know, the best thing about the the whole Kyrie situation is that because he's now in health and safety protocols because for 60 days, right? Is that yeah, what it is? He, yeah, he's unvaccinated and got it. You you're not allowed to get the vaccine for 60 days. And so even if they convince him to get the vaccine, then you have to add on to, you know, the whatever the number of doses required to be able to meet New York state law. That means he can conceivably not not be able to play home games for another three months, which is in the middle of March, end of March. Um, so what is that going to do to the to the Nets timeline? Yeah, I mean, the Nets are a fascinating squad because they have all this top end talent. And every time you've watched them, though, they don't seem very cohesive. And then it's, it's like last year's playoffs where out of their best three players, they had like one and a half <laughs> every game or every series. And I just... Uh, I'm actually curious to see how that all comes together, but I, I don't know what they're going to do. If they start, if the Warriors start having all G leaguers and stuff and random dudes playing, it'll kind of be like, do you remember the scab football season from like the late eighties? I think, do you remember that the NFL, like when yeah. they went on strike and they had, uh, I remember watching those games, man. And it was really weird. It was really confusing. And I think that's what this, would be obviously we're hoping that the whole squad wouldn't get wiped out, but man, I mean, the funny thing about Draymond saying he had the booster was that he said something about how, like, I'm doing what they're telling me I should do. So I should be good. I'm like, yes. And no, (laughs) like you should be better off, but that's not the nature of, of viruses. Right. And, and pandemics, what do you want the league to do just as a, as a fan, as a, reasonable citizen of the world. I think what they should do, first of all, is just be a bright, shiny example of what is the right thing to do, which is essentially not do what the NFL is doing, which is scaling back COVID testing. 
uh, for asymptomatic players. Asymptomatic players can still pass on the virus as much as anybody else. Um, and yes, we are dealing with athletes who are tip top shape, but what Omicron has been doing, uh, even though it is not as crazy as Delta, it still causes long COVID, um, which, you know, you can ask Jason Tatum um, what long COVID is. And so, you know, basically just be very vigilant about this. And the reality is, and I think I said this very, very early on in one of the podcasts is the reality is it's just really going to depend on when you get COVID and not if you get COVID. And so the team who gets, who is fully recovered in time for the playoffs, whether it's through a combination of vaccines and um, actually getting the virus is going to be the one that makes it through. And that's just like any year where there's injuries and this is just treated like an injury. It's a good thing, honestly, that the NBA's, their playoffs, the meat of the real season is in the warm weather months, you know, because you look at the NFL, their stuff happens, their playoffs, their Super Bowl, those happen in the wintertime. And I can see why they would want to try this whole thing out about, you know, allowing asymptomatic players to play. I mean, for the past almost two years, it's all just been trying to figure out on the fly. I figure that the NBA, they just want to get through Christmas, but we'll see what happens after that. Because eventually, in the worst case scenario, you're going to end up with really bad watered down product that no one's going to be happy to see. You're going to end up with teams that screw up the standings because it'll really depend on how good your G league (laughs) roster is. And if you can get old dudes like Joe Johnson to sign up, you know what I mean? Like, Hey, is uh, the trail spree well available, (laughs) you know? Well, it doesn't matter how good our G league team is, right? Cause anybody can pick off our G league team for their roster, right? It's really just our two way players, which I guess. So my question to you is, do you really like Dalton? Like, why do we have Dalton as our second two-way player? He was decent in preseason summer league, but I, I don't know the Santa Cruz Warriors well enough to see who else would be on there. And he's been on the two-way, I believe, for the whole season so far. So he's a little bit more familiar currently with the guys and with playing, and they know what they can get from him in terms of a uh, certain consistency, I guess, as the second two-way player. But like I keep saying, like waiting for Jacob Evans the third and Jordan Bell to to waltz in that door and then have them tank the Warriors season. <laughs> well, it sounds like, I mean, we did sign. So we signed up, how do you know how to pronounce his name? Is it Quin, Quindari? Uh, Quindari Witherspoon, right? Over yeah. Jacob Evans and Jordan Bell to be on the team. You know, I'm sure the boys are actually going to try to do everything they can not to bring up Jordan Bell and Jacob Evans, you know, just bring some new guy who uh, has no track record and, you know. Get some new blood, yeah. I, I hope to see at least uh, a decent game on Christmas, but who knows, man. I'm waiting for the tweets to come in like so-and-so is in COVID protocols and they should just keep the Warriors core isolated. <laughs> <laughs> for like the next two months. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I can hope for is, I mean, the Bay Area COVID rates are not as bad as other parts of the country, although everything did double in San Francisco as of <laughs> five days ago. But doubling goes from 100 to 200 cases per day. So The Warriors do play quite a few road games in the next couple of weeks. They play at Phoenix on Christmas. They go to Denver. They go to Utah. <laughs> They go to Dallas. They go to New Orleans. Do you think the the NBA is going to have um, the All Star game this year on February 18? I do. I do. Again, it depends on. Listen, like if it's a case where they don't pause or cancel any games between now and then, and the wheels just come off the season in the worst case scenario, then they probably won't. But they're going to try to do everything they can to stick to some normalcy and have those tentpole events in the NBA happen, right? So I can see them putting a pause to, to like kind of reset the numbers a little bit, pull numbers back, hopefully, and then make a go of it again. I just have a lot of confidence that everything will be fine by the playoffs. I think so too. I, I don't know why, but I just think, I think this is the year where everything's finally going to get better after Omicron sweeps through and attacks the most vulnerable, which is sad, but true. I think- the playoffs are far enough away 
basically it's just, you know, we've been through worse times and knock on wood, it won't get as bad, but I'm just curious to see what Adam Silver does when he'll pull the trigger on certain things, if at all, you know, if at all, right. Maybe he'll be like, well, most rosters still have three of their best uh, rotation players. So let's just keep it going. Hockey fans, DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL, has a no-brainer offer that'll make you a winner once any shot gets past the goalie. New customers can bet just $1 on any NHL game and win $100 in free bets if either team scores. The NHL got rid of ties in 2005, so you know someone is going to light the lamp. If Sportsbook isn't available in your state yet, no worries. Everyone can play for huge cash prizes all season long with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Hockey Contests. DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes with their first deposit. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now, use promo code TBPN, throw down $1 on any NHL game, and win 100 in free bets if either team scores a goal. That's promo code TBPN this week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only, new customers only, minimum $5 deposit, and $1 wager required, one per customer, restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. What I will say, however, though, is I feel like an old man for saying this because I, I just did not enjoy the actual fan experience going to the Warriors game yesterday against the Kings. I was sitting there with my mask on the whole time. Where were and, your seats? Uh, it was upper row, upper deck, but just like one row in um, from from the edge and okay. uh, pretty close to mid court where I can see the giant jumbotron showing all the data analytics that I can handle the whole game. Mm-hmm. But like the two guys next to me, like spent three quarters eating like three French fries and with their masks off. And then the woman in front of me spent one entire quarter just coughing. And then the guy <laughs> one sort of aisle over uh, spent um, the last two quarters coughing. It was just like, man, it was just not. And then somebody offered me to go to the game against the Grizzlies this week. And I was like, I'm good. I'm fine. <laughs> I think we've gotten to the point where the fan experience is pretty, pretty good for me. For me, like just watching it on TV versus that's what I always say. <laughs> it's just like, I mean, I still have to go home and watch it again anyway. Right. So you're going to have to watch it again anyway. I don't, the only thing that you catch that you can catch when you're in person is, you know, to, to see things that are off ball, which is great. And all the stuff going on in the stands. But that's what like, uh, iPhones and Twitter and Instagram are for, right? Eventually like the best stuff comes out. Exactly. Yeah. The best stuff was out. My favorite part, and you know, I was not totally safe while eating dinner, but like my favorite fan exp- part of the fan experience is just, there's a new steakhouse that's in Chase Center that has a secret entrance into what? this, into the arena. Did you know is about there, this? It's called is, Miller and Lux. Is there another entrance from the street? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, essentially you, you basically, you walk in downstairs on the Terry, uh, is it Francoa, Fran- Francois Boulevard side. And downstairs is a, is a bar. It's an amazing bar, amazing wine, amazing mixed drinks, everything, like a handful of tables. You don't need a reservation downstairs, I don't think. Or you can get seated there if you do show up without a reservation. And then upstairs is reservation only. Um, so, you know, last week before, <laughs> there was no game and I went to eat there and it was amazing. But so I decided to come back right before the game. And we're just eating dessert and some burgers downstairs and the price is high, but like, if you're thinking, if you're paying like $16 for a burger inside, why not pay $25 for a gourmet burger before you get in? Sure. And then, so when you eat and you're done, you basically can go back upstairs where the restaurant is. And if you walk past the bathroom, there's just like a, it's like an unmarked door and you walk in and there's an entrance in the hallway and to the right is apparently the players, um, their locker rooms. And on the left is a, um, a metal detector and you just scan to go in hmm. and you end up in the section with all of the, the box seats and um, the plaza level seats. And so, I mean, it's a great fan experience to be, I think the best experience is if you watch an early four o'clock game. Um, yeah, and then my friend dinner. watched, yeah, my friend watched, um, I don't know if it was last year or this year, he watched uh the Raptors play at four and had a reservation at seven or eight went Mm. there and he was eating. And I guess he left the arena and came back in. He didn't know about the secret entrance and he's just 
sitting there like with his facing the entrance into the restaurant while eating. And then suddenly, like somehow he said, uh, uh, Barbosa and Andre Iguodala were like in a special seat in the back, which is usually empty for um, Joe Lakeup alone. And he's like, how did Andre Iguodala get past me without me noticing? And uh, I told him there's a secret entrance straight from the locker room into the arena. Wait, this was last season? Uh, this might've been the beginning of the season. Yeah. Okay. Cause Iguodala, <laughs> he's yeah. adjacent. He wasn't last that's season. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> so real quick, let me ask you, what's your thoughts on the Warriors Grizzlies game? Because the Grizzlies have beaten the Warriors two, two times in a row, the play in game. And then earlier this season. And to me, it's clear that the Warriors are a better team, but the, the Grizz are just dangerous. What do you think? the outcome or what are you looking to see? <laughs> I mean, I'll preface this by the fact that like, we don't know who's going to be playing <laughs> and the Warriors are going to be missing Jordan Poole, Andrew Wiggins, <laughs> and likely Jonathan Kaminka. They'll probably sit him out with that, whatever tweaked back that he got in the Kings game, which must've been a bummer when you found out he wasn't coming back in that game. But man, I actually don't even think there's worth talking about this game. <laughs> what I will say is, you know, I think I think the Grizzlies caught the Warriors off guard the last few times. Yeah. Um, and I also think that they play with a grudge because of all the things that Andre Iguodala said while on the team, but not really on the Grizzlies. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. so they're playing for something that the Warriors don't even care about. There was nobody on that team that was there during the Warriors, like, playoff runs with them right, right. Like, like the three-quarter length <laughs> court shot that the war that Steph made on them in the playoffs like there's nobody on that team anymore mm -hmm. and so I would hope that this week they are not in that frame of mind like the Warriors actually know that this is a legit team mm -hmm. but the Grizzlies are also bringing back John Morant who you know they played really well without which is hilarious the whole the whole storyline about the fans like telling John Morant to sit down is hilarious is so indicative of like a small market like they were telling him to do that so he doesn't get hurt no like they were just like we did better without oh. you sit down it's it crazy it's like do they not know like what part of the country they're in and like <laughs> kevin durant's not signing with them anytime soon <laughs> just remember this actually remember that statement when you get closer to a john morant contract extension and he realizes he can't get a you know an eight figure shoe deal uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. Just remember that, Grizzly friends. Yeah, you know, I think these COVID games coming up, these games where everybody's out for protocols. I think this is just going to be more of a test for coaches and GMs, and to see how good they are at picking players and making things work and keeping people motivated. Because, yeah, like even thinking about what we can quote unquote learn from a Warriors Grizzlies matchup where the Warriors are missing like, you know, they're two of their top three scorers and one of their most athletic young guys, a guy who is actually really built to play against the young Grizzlies. If the Warriors lose to the Grizzlies, you're not going to be like, Oh, the Grizzlies are better. The Grizzlies have the Warriors number. You know, no one's yeah. going to say that except for maybe like bleacher report or NBA analysis.net or something. We'll see, man. We'll see. I don't know. I have no idea what's what's going to happen. If they pause the season, then, you know, I have a whole bunch of backlogged episodes <laughs> about random stuff that I could definitely put out <laughs> and talk about. I don't think they're going back in the bubble, though. I mean, just the way our society is going, like, this is just, we're just going to plow right through it. Yeah, they're not going back into a bubble. That'd be ridiculous. What do you think about the Christmas game coming up? Hey, man, if the Warriors' sons... I was really looking forward to that game and I'm still looking forward to it. But if we're missing like Kaminga, Poole, Wiggins, it's not like we don't have a chance, but I watched the Suns play the Lakers. The Lakers are mediocre, but the Suns are still really solid. And I don't think they had anyone in protocols. They had all their starting lineup playing. Can I, can I make a prediction? Yeah. Let me ask you, where, where did the Suns play the Lakers? LA. Okay. <laughs> can you <just> <laughs> <laughs> okay no, i'm no. i'm i'm just gonna bet that like a combination of mikhail bridges and or devin booker and or deandre ayton are gonna end up in protocol before saturday i think you might actually be right that's actually a really good point i mean if they're playing phoenix it's a different story but i mean they flew to la 
So, and they don't play, right? They played yesterday. Yeah, they're back home tomorrow to play. So they they had a day off. Who are they playing? <laughs> they play the Thunder tomorrow. But that means they had a day off in LA or they they probably stayed in LA for one day and flew back today. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I guess well, whether or not they <laughs> they hit protocol depends on whether or not they flew directly back from LA. And this is what the season has come down to. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is what it's going to be. Cool, man. Well, good to have you on. You have a happy holiday, man. Yeah, dude. Thanks so much. All right. This has been another episode of the Oakwarius Podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter at Patrick Epino, E-P-I-N-O, or at Oakland Warriors. Check us out at OaklandWarriors.com. And be sure to tell your fellow Warrior fan friends to tune in and listen. The Oakwarius Podcast is produced by National Film Society and is a part of the Basketball Podcast Network. And if you can, please leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever else you listen and they allow five stars. That's it. Music in this episode provided by Paper Sun. Special thanks to Paul Amardo for production support. See you next time. <laughs>